morning, everyone. It's indeed a wonderful, bright morning, and we are glad we have our candle. Let's hope we have some cooling juices coming in for And we need a very warm welcome to our community, up in Borough, like that. Not realistic, yeah, don't worry. This morning I want to share my thoughts on how do we live the truth of our beliefs. On November 15th, the BBC shared its usual program on faith and spirituality type of practice. Based on faith and spirituality, with an emphasis on the Zambian people, and in particular an amendment of 1960 year old. The facilitator sought to analyze and give its views on this amendment and its perceived effect on the Zambia people. It is actually said that Zambia is the only country that has described itself as a Christian country. This particular amendment was done in 1996. The preamble to the Constitution reads like this, and I quote, declares the Republic a Christian nation while upholding the right of every person to enjoy that person's freedom of conscience or religion. The BBC program sought evidence to indicate whether or not the lives of the Zambian people reflected the declaration. The methodology to secure evidence was on-the-spot interviews with parents, ordinary citizens, and observed day-to-day -day incidents that somehow could be measured to translate whether or not Zambians emulated of the Christian religion. Houston Smith's book, The World's Religion, states this about Christianity, and I quote, Again, we must come back to what those teachings were about. Teachings here reflects Jesus' teachings. Everything that came from his lips formed the surface of a burning glass to focus human awareness on two most important facts about life. God, God's overwhelming love of humanity and the need for people to accept that love and let it flow through them to others. In experiencing God as infinite love bent on people's salvation, Jesus was an authentic child of Judaism. He did what we have seen only in not allowing the post-exilic holiness code to impede God's compassion. Time after time, as in his story of the shepherd who risked 99 sheep to go after one that has strayed, Jesus tried to convey God's absolute love for every single human being. To perceive this love and let it penetrate one's very marrow was to respond in the only way possible, in profound and total gratitude for the wonders of God's grace in the world. However, by the following week, a listener from Oslo, who had just been back from Lusaka, did not agree with the slam the program. As it seemed to portray that the lives of the people were not in conjunction with the description of the Constitution, she felt that the program was largely Western in its approach in seeking empirical evidence of the Christianity of the Zambian people. Their evidence sought to observe meetings in churches or events charities sponsored by churches. Their frequency was an indicator used to measure this inclusive Christianity, as well as government's policy in the function of the churches or in the lives of their people. Therefore, the listener wanted the producers of heart and soul to understand that Western sectarian standards could not be used to judge what or if there is a God, but that how the people live with God as part of your lives. So let us look again at what Houston Smith says as parameters in the Jesus' teachings. God's overwhelming love of humanity and the need for people to accept that love and let it flow through them to others. And the way possible to respond to that is with profound gratitude for the ones of God's grace. By extension, our founder, Ernest Holmes, Dr. Ernest Holmes states, God is life, not some life, but all life. God is action, 
not some action, but all action. God is power, not some power, but all power. God is presence, not some presence, but all presence. God is pure spirit filling all space. This pure spirit animates your every act. There is a real you which lives in a real God, and the two are one. To know this is to understand the secret of life. To realize that the law of God written in your own mind is to make available to you a power which can meet every need in your soul. And our declaration states, we believe in our own soul, our own spirit, and our own destiny, for we understand that the life of man is God. Please repeat that to me. I understand that my life is God. I understand that my life is God. In a half voice. A whisper in your heart. Yes, my life is God. Emerson concurs with this, and he says, meantime within man is the soul of the whole, the wise silence, the universal beauty to which every part and particle is equally related to the eternal one. We know there is a God. The entire universe and us are evidence of it. But how we do we how do we live that truth as centers of God consciousness? At this time, the whole world celebrates the birth of Jesus. Jesus who revealed the Christ who believed. And that is the gift that has been placed in each one of us. One reminder is by utilizing laws and mathematics, we were able to land on a copy. The Rosetta traveled for a decade, four billion miles throughout space, and then one day in November woke up, communicated to us when a path landed on some far distant comet and could now transmit information on soil, water, etc. This comet was moving at a pace of 35,000 miles per hour, and yet a part of the Rosetta was able to land on it successfully. Tell me now the amount of permutations and mathematical formula that could be focused on something as long as This awesome call that incarnated us all out of its love is us as us and it allows us to accomplish such things. So how do we make this truth about you? How do we let the power that is accessible and available to us in an instant reveal itself to us? Let us look at different avenues to express the truth about you. Emma Curtis Hopkins puts a spin on it, which is worth contemplating. She states in high mysticism that the terms Father, God, Creator, Lord, are not names but terms of address derived from the benefits and works of God. And the name of God is stated in Exodus. It is I am that I am. In fact, Exodus 14 states, and I quote, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said thus, Shalt thou, shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you, end of quote. I am is the name of God. So logically in thinking about how to live the truth of our being, we start with that basic phrase, I am. Every time we start with I am, if we could slow it down before we tap something onto it and really be cognizant of the truth, that when we are saying I am, we are declaring the presence of God in those two words. Then we tap on the known or adjective. We are now revealing and manifesting that presence as that adjective in our world of affairs. By our words, we are creating our experience in that instant. We are describing what the presence of God is appearing in that moment as us. Do we say it in a state of mind that is reverent, sacred, in awe? I am good is a declaration that God as us is being good at 
that moment. I am joy. I am love or I am joyful. God appearing as joy in me and the experience is joy filled or love filled. We won't mention the other adjectives that describe the opposite of who we are unless we make the distinction that when we experience discomfort, it is only an acknowledgement that we use as information to move to the real truth of our being. I am not feeling well means at this moment I'm experiencing the opposite of my truth. But when I go within to the indwelling presence and let the truth of my being be revealed, I am guided into ideas that allow me to experience my real self, perfect form. We have already laid the foundation. We understand that the life of man is God. How do we interpret this in our daily lives is not our purpose. We start basically with care when we know what follows I am. We know also in God experiencing itself through us that an interpretation of that satisfaction may be channeled through wrong channels. So in Reverend Elmer's words, one of our amazing we observe what excites us. Simply when we feel joy, love, peace, and all attributes of God, what is the stimuli that gives rise to those feelings? This is important because these indicators arise from that internal relationship we have with our individual <coughs> and law of our life. And as an example is when young Jordan Bennett spoke to us on New Sunday. It is a true testimony of living the truth of our being. He does not see people as dirty, smelly, broken, lame. All he sees is a person wanting something to eat. That is his mission. That is love. That is God appearing and revealing itself as love. That love that is radiating from the young man lives spirits. That is why one can respond to him and say, I love you. Maya Angelou tells a story from one of her essays, and I quote, One day the teacher, Frederick Wilkerson, asked me to read to him. I was 24, very erudite, very worldly. He asked that I read from Lessons in Truth, a book by Henry King. A section she states which ended with these words, God loves me. I read the piece and closed the book. And the teacher said, read it again. I pointedly opened the book and I sarcastically read, God loves me. He said, again. And, about, and after about the seventh repetition, I began to sense that there might be truth in that statement that there was a possibility that God really did love me. Me, Maya Angelou, I suddenly began to cry at the grandness of it all. I know that if God loved me, then I could do wonderful things. I could try great things, learn anything, achieve anything. But what could stand against me with God? Since one person, any person with God constitutes the majority. That knowledge humbled me, melted my bones, closed my ears and made my teeth, make my teeth rock loosely in their bones. And it also liberated me. I am a big bird winning over high mountains, <coughs> down in serene valleys. I am rivers of waves on silver seas. I am a springy trembling in anticipation. God loves us all. To live the truth of our being is when we hear hate, bigotry, discrimination as a result of religious beliefs, caste system of separation, skin color, any type of different orientation. We see these incidents as smoke screens and view them with love and compassion, non-judgment in our hearts. When we hear of pain, sickness, and suffering, we shift our focus to the truth of being, which is holiness and perfection. When we hear of 
poverty and debt be affirmed the truth, which is, there is always among us, and God is our source. Our eyes, eternal, internal eyes and ears must remain single. It is not the easiest thing to follow through, but gently practice filling our minds with ideas that affirm our wholeness, that we live in an abundant universe until they become so embedded in consciousness we live the truth of our being. Another way of living the truth of our being is the full utilization of our God-given talents, abilities, skill sets, and all of that attributes. Do we have practically make use of our particular skill set rather than fully participating in life? with zest and enthusiasm to the honor and glory of God? Or do we feel that someone owes us something before giving ourselves fully to the opportunities that have been given to us to radiate the God potential to Each one of us come fully equipped with everything needed for a truly fulfilling and satisfying life. There's nothing to shy away from but to give ourselves fully to every assignment we have been given. Our assignment is the roles we play in every channel of life's endeavor. Everything we do with honor blesses the entire universe. As the transformation that takes place in our consciousness lifts the consciousness of all individuals, thereby permitting each individual to live in a higher awareness of their own capacities and We have, as our birthright, freedom. And if we develop that trust in our relationship of oneness with God, living Spirit Almighty, no matter what challenges or opportunities arise, we have the ability, the integrity, the courage and strength to deal with all of them by nature of who we are. So let us view life as full of opportunities to bless, uplift, and prosper each other. Another way of living our truth is that in each one of us, Inherent is the ability to appreciate beauty in all things. Beauty surrounds and indwells us. But how do we treat the external world that we have been placed on? Do we treat this pain of existence with respect? Do we appreciate the beauty of all that lives out of us? The plants, the animals. Persons living close to the earth will tell you of a miracle in planting a seed. Our animal lovers will talk about the unquestionable love and devotion we get from our animals. Isn't it all another avenue for God to show his deep abiding love for us by placing us in an abundantly beautiful universe that provides for us? Do we walk around with blinders and forget that we have been given dominion over all the earth and therefore it is our responsibility to protect our environment? as one way of living the truth of our world. Another way of living our truth is to look at our gratitude scale. Do we live in constant gratitude for that power that is greater than us, who has, show, had, who has chosen each one as its expression to love, to bless, and accomplish its mighty works? Do we look with gratitude at each other, appreciating the truth that each one is masterfully created with infinite potential to be anything that they were created to be? Gratitude is an attitude that overshadows all facets of our life's experience. This attitude allows us to live in constant faith with the assurance that we are integral to the fulfillment of life on this plane of existence. Therefore, from the sense of gratitude, we are able to open ourselves to be more receptive to the expansion of our consciousness to operate at a higher level of excellence. Gratitude makes us humble that indeed each one of us is entrusted with something special to accomplish on this day. Another way of living the truth of our being is by observing the quality of our relationship. Our primary relationship is the one we have with our Creator. Do we anticipate with joy our communion with the Eternal One that lives within us? Do we, before every task, seek the counsel from within? Do we commit our day's experience to the omnipresence of love, the omnipotence and perfect intelligence that is God? Is our relationship with the one power and presence one of reverence? 
sacredness, joy, and complete abandonment to the development of our spiritual experience. If all of the above are true, then our other relationships will be expressed in love, truth, happiness, and joy. That's why it makes forgiveness so easy when we love each other. So we spice up our relationship with the self, with affirmations, meditation, being still, service to our fellow travelers, and so we can now truly anticipate a true fellowship with the Lord of our lives and all of ourselves. Summary. We can live the truth of our being by one, noting how we use I am. Remember, when you say I am, it is the point of your power. And it is also the promise of God's glory. Second one is observing what excites us. Third, full use of abilities and attributes to the honor and glory of God. Our responsibility for external work. Living from an attitude of gratitude. And the quality of our relationship with self and all of ourselves. Emma Curtis Hopkins reminds us. The name I am that I am brings up from the deep wells of hidden strength in all men. The sincerity, boldness, and intelligence of leadership. And that originality of action and language have characterized the heroes of the ages whose names have lived so long in history that they have become myths. The name of God brings up from deep within each one of us our strength, sincerity, boldness, intelligence of leadership, and originality of action and language. That means each one of us has the authority, the integrity, to live as a center of God consciousness. We are bold because we know who we are. We speak with authority because the law supports us. We believe that the universal spirit, which is God, operates through a universal mind which is the law of God, and that we are surrounded by this creative mind which receives the direct impress of our thoughts and acts. We are leaders because the intelligence of God is accessible and available to us. But above all, we know that it is the Father within that we the world. Dr. Elman left a gift for us. Some of us had the privilege of studying the book Art of Mysticism by Joan Goldsmith with her. Before she completed the final chapter with us, she made her demonstration of spiritual illumination and the full attainment of conscious union with our inner love. Before she went, she summarized the chapter by the words of the last verse of Old Little Town of Bethlehem as written in Our Science of Mind in love. And I quote, O ye who deeply slumber, awaken and rejoice. Your anthems sing and praises bring in one harmonious voice, like unto music swelling in full and vibrant tune. The Christ within that air has been to all men shall be known. Let us awaken to our inborn Christ set by living the truth of our own. Let us rejoice in this truth. Let the anthems of praise and joy ring out above our oneness, our oneness with the indwelling Christ. Let this vibrant melody within us now swell from this tabernacle, encompassing all with its peace, love, and joy. This Christ within that ever has been and will always be with us until all men awaken to the truth. Of their youth. We believe in our own soul, our own spirit, our own destiny, for we understand that the life of man is God. Happy Christmas, everyone.